I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. Let me read you this quote and tell me if you share my frustration. Experts attribute a part of the decline of affordability to steep rise in mortgage rates last year. The part that frustrates me is all these experts think that the affordability crisis is only because of interest rates. And they have this illusion of the fact that if the mortgage rates are all of a sudden back to the twos and threes percent, that we're going to have more affordability and more people can get into houses. And in a way that makes sense, right? except for the fact that home prices right now are still just stagnant. They're not dropping. In some areas, yes, have seen drastic declines, but for the rest of the freaking country, you can't afford a house if the median priced home can't be afforded by the median income in the United States. That is an affordability crisis. It doesn't matter how low the interest rates go. If you can't afford a $350,000 house, because you do not make that kind of income. It doesn't matter if it's at one freaking percent because you can't afford it. Like that just blows my mind. Home prices are too high. We do not have enough homes being built in the United States. We are short 7.5 million apartment homes across the United States, 7.5 million. And then they say, oh, well that's going to get better. They've been saying it's gonna get better. But what they don't say is that all, they're only building, they're only building in major metropolitan areas. And the 400,000 units you're talking about, Maria, that are coming online in apartments on the surface is a problem. But if you look at where those units are being built, the top 10 metros with the highest levels of construction make up almost 45% of that new supply. That means that people that live outside those major metropolitan areas are still gonna have unaffordable rents of most Americans income is going towards housing. That is a major problem. We have not built enough homes across the United States. We need to build more homes. Their answer to just building apartment homes is not going to be enough. A good portion of the United States does not want to live in an apartment for the rest of their lives. Look at this. 73% of aspiring homeowners cite affordability as their primary obstacle. Incomes in America are not matching the cost of housing. So either something's got to give. Either housing needs to get more affordable or companies need to pay more money. And we all know corporations are not willing to pay Americans more money. If anything, they want to pay them less. So how do we make homes more affordable? We build them. If you build it, he will come. That is why the housing crash happened the way it did the last time. We had a ton of supply, ton. There's very many factors that cause that housing crash. Of course, the cookie loans and everybody knows that, just watch the movie, The Big Short. But if you really wanna know why we're in the predicament that we are now and we haven't seen home prices drop like they did in 2008, like a lot of the YouTube experts said it was going to happen, is because we do not have a supply of homes. They do not exist. It's a painless source, but if you look at um, uh, Black Knight, uh, Realtor.com, as well as um, um, uh, uh, what's it, AltosResearch.com, we have around like 20 to 30 percent more homes for sale nationwide compared to last year, as well as the year year before. But when looking at levels back at the same time frame in 2019, we have around like 50 to 55 percent fewer homes for sale from 2005 ish to around 2011. We had around two to 2.5 million homes for sale. Now we have less than, I think it's less than 700,000 700, in, in the US. So let's look, let's just look together. 2000 to 2009, we built over 14 million houses across the United States, 14.56. Then if you go from 2010 to 2019, we built 6.9 million houses. That is less than half than we built the 10 years prior to that. We are building less. We do not have enough homes. That's all that's going to do is increase the price to have a house in order to purchase a house. It does not matter if the interest rates are at 1% or 0% if the home costs too much money. So Money Magazine came out with a, an article about what Redfin experts are saying about home affordability. With the combined interest rates going up and there is no new listings coming on the market, home price growth outpaced income during the pandemic and it's no wonder affordability has dropped. And Redfin Deputy Chief Economist Taylor Marr says it's 
the lowest level in history. Mortgage rates will eventually come down and the Fed makes progress fighting inflation. Home prices have, have already begun falling, he said. But what he doesn't tell you that home prices have only been in falling in some markets. They're not the majority of the United States. The markets that have fallen the most Let's take a look. According to Business Insider, they say Salt Lake, Utah, Los Angeles, California, San Diego, California, Sacramento, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Seattle, Washington, San Jose, California, San Francisco, California. If you notice a trend there, they're on the west coast of the United States and a good majority of them are in California. So if you don't live in those places, you're still seeing home prices either remain flat or even rise. Start homes are now going to be considered mansions in 10 more years if we continue down this road. We need to incentivize builders to build more affordable housing. And as much as you guys want to complain in the comments section, we have to get the government involved because Builders are not going to do it for free. They're not going to take a loss on their money. There needs to be incentive for them to even want to build more affordable housing. In order to do that, you have to pay up the big guy, give him some freaking money. And in order to do that, you got to have to pass laws and incentives or tax credits or something like that in order for this to happen. You can also allow the government to buy housing supplies for these developers and they get a cut of these supplies at a cost, at a, at, a, at a discounted rate. It's not that difficult to do. And another way we can do this, and I talk about it all the time, is modular construction. There are many modular companies out there that are ready, willing, and able to put up housing. Not only housing that is less expensive, but it's more efficient and it will get it done quicker. We could have a lot of houses built in a very short period of time if this was incentivized by our federal government because everybody needs to get freaking paid. I'm not asking for a handout. I'm asking for homes to be built that people can afford. I'm not asking for uh, vouchers from the government. I'm asking for this to have a tangible product for someone that works the median income job to be able to afford the median income house. We can't keep going down this road where we keep talking about interest rates. And if they were lower, that would make things more affordable. Yeah, it would make more things affordable. But when the median priced home is unaffordable for the median income, that's still freaking unaffordable. Now, So now I got that all off of my chest. I need you to understand one more thing. There is a group of investors, big corporations that are now selling a new American dream. They say that they are trying to fill in a need that is the younger generations don't necessarily want to own a home, that they're free spirits and they want the ability to just pick up and go whenever they want. And sure, there is a small segment of the world that wants this, but these build-to-rent companies are selling propaganda. If you haven't heard of a build-to-rent community, it is exactly what it sounds like. They build the house, the corporations build the house. Its sole intent, the whole entire community, is just to rent them out. So you think about a whole entire subdivision of little houses that normally Americans would purchase. They build them just specifically for people to rent them, the whole entire community. If you look at this statistic from Bankrate, it says, home ownership was cited as 74% of the U.S. adults being the American dream, outpacing being retired at 62%. But having a successful career, 61% only think that is the American dream. Having children is 42%, and getting a college degree is only 33%. Younger people today still want to buy a house. And for them to continuously advertise that they're filling in this need for the younger generations, I think it's because they intentionally are trying to not build as many homes so they can continue to make home prices so unaffordable that they have these built to rent housing so that they will rent to them for the rest of their lives. And these kids will never have generational wealth that you get from owning a home. You have security when you have a home. When you have equity in your home, you could always borrow against your own equity in your own home. If you have a whole generation that rents, that doesn't exist anymore and you can control them even more. I know that's my tinfoil hat thing. I know it sounds very conspiracy theory-like and I don't think the builders are in on the gig. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, I don't think that's it. But if you keep building materials extremely high, you keep the supply of homes very low, and more corporate investors, the only ones that are building, and they're building them to rent, what do you do? You create a generation that's dependent on not only corporations keeping those houses up, but the fact that they have no generational wealth that they can borrow against on their own homes. So yeah, I think this is by design. So after hearing all of this, what is your opinion about the affordability crisis here in the United States? Do you think it's going to be getting worse or do you still think that we have enough houses available to enough Americans that the home prices are gonna to start to decline and we're gonna see a housing crash like we did in 2008. Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your opinions. To watch more videos about the affordability crisis here in the United States, you're gonna to wanna to watch these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.